Hey all, Steve here. You might have been expecting Jennifer, but I live here too, so here's a video by me. You might remember this little bridge from the last video that I was in. Since that bridge is repaired and the weather's changing to late fall, we are switching a little bit to light stewardship season. Today, I'm spending a smidgen of time on doing some woody thinning to create light and at the same time create a brush pile for some of our mammals that need places to escape and shelter, to escape to and shelter in, such as rabbits, um, squirrels, so forth. Now you can see dappled sun and shade in here. We are not going for deep, dense forests here because we like more of a, a little more light, a mix really, a mix of everything. Thickets, savanna, scattered trees, lots of native shrubs, um, lots of native ground flora, and to get a good mix of those different size classes and species you need well we need light not entire not full sun but not full shade a happy medium so if you look around here in this small area i in the last probably 10 15 minutes i've taken down three or four american elm and three or four black walnut and you might be thinking geez i thought you were a tree hugger what's up with cutting down trees well, the first thing you learn um, is that you're not just a tree hugger. You love all plants, mainly native plants to your area. Trees, shrubs, forbs, um, grasses, sedges, and so on. So to have all that variety, of course, as you know, you need... You can't just have trees because, in at least in our part of the world, you get a lot of trees and you get then full shade. So, our reasoning is, we get tons of black walnut and American elm that seed in on their own. We let them grow uh, to the density that we want. And then those that we let go can provide their habitat um, and food offerings. And then um, the other ones we just have to call. But we normally don't spray the stumps with herbicide because we'll just let them re-sprout and cut them again. And then we can use that for brush piles, of which we have quite a few. Um, but anyway, that's just a brief description of what I'm doing. And then you might be wondering, well, what magical tools do you have to enable you to do so much? Uh, well, A, I'm not doing that much. But B, you don't really need a lot of tools to do a little bit of work or a lot of work. If you have the time, the interest, the energy, um, you can get a lot done with your noggin, a good pair of loppers, and a good uh, coarse flip saw, and a pair of gloves. So we might demonstrate more detail on how we use those items, because every tool, even if it appears to be simple, does have a technique that allows you to use it effectively and safely. But for today, I just wanted to do an introduction to our the beginning of our stewardship season um, and given that it's past nesting season for pretty much all birds as far as I know and we can get into our habitat areas and um, work without too much disruption to the wildlife we're trying to promote. Now you might also be wondering what is on my gloves here. Well years ago I noticed a pattern that most people just kill weeds and don't plant anything so anymore when we uh, do any thinning or of natives or non-natives or weed management, we like to go back and plant things. Today, it's just going to be uh, some seeds from a native grass called river oats. Chasmanthium something, I can't remember. But these, we have a bunch of these already. They've gone to seed, the seeds are ready to go. So I am going to scatter these around in the area that I thinned. They do, uh, they do okay from part shade to full sun, but they 
really do well with a good amount of sun. So I'm going to sign off now. Wish you a happy set of holidays and whatever sewership you're doing. And then I'm going to plant those seeds just by scattering them around. Our newly thinned savanna pod uh, shrub thicket.